that prompts Team Liquid to take a Rek'Sai or an Italy early. I not sure if it would with all the stuff that could still be up. Yeah, and that's the thing. We've seen a lot of Swain and a lot of Vladimir. I think are the immediate picks that jump out. A lot of different champions got touched, wow. but it feels like a lot of the bands just sort of say, oh. hey, the champions you guys used to play, we still want to bat, and it is actually first pick Rek'Sai for Team Liquid. Hey, Dardock takes the pace of the game. Also, you look at Smithy, and he's a very good Rek'Sai player as well, so that's a bit of a denial pick, and it's also moved a little bit towards team fighting. Obviously, X Smithy could pick Nidalee into it. He wouldn't have to rush it. And that does mean that stuff like Vladimir is completely available, and I would be a little bit surprised if COD doesn't go for it. I think the champion's fairly strong, but we'll see if they do take it here. Maybe TL knows something we don't about champion preferences here for CLG. Certainly taking their time, though, with these first few picks. No need to rush them. CLG will take almost the full duration. 20 seconds left still just to make some final alterations. <laughs> <laughs> do it. <laughs> No, he's not going to do Sej, Wani. The Karma that they hovered really quick and the Vladimir could be two picks that they'd end up taking. Yeah, there we go. Hey, look at you. Oh, man, it's <laughs> almost like they're power picks and we're just <laughs> able to see them take them. Surprising the Karma. To me, it's a little bit surprising the Karma has become a power pick so quickly in North America. It definitely seems like the perception is that she can win any matchup. She's obviously very good against the melee tank supports, but a lot of people think she has enough burst to beat the sustained supports like Anami that we may end up seeing from Matt, which is why we're seeing such incredibly high priority on Karma in the pick ban phases here in NA. Yeah, definitely been a champion that is unique once again to North America in a lot of ways. Again, Afro Moon yeah. and Adrian. Baker, just, started with Baker just goes and plays it mid. Oh. Like, what is this? Man. Did that last night as the two undefeated teams in LCK, Samsung and SKT. Uh, SKT is now the only undefeated team, so they did it. Well. Not too surprising there, <laughs> yeah. but definitely Karma Champion that's been making the rounds globally. 10 seconds though for TL to make picks 2 and 3. Dardoch having a little bit of fun with a Galio Hover, but they will ultimately settle on Braum and Azir. Interesting. So Azir has been such a high priority mid laner. He had, I would call them fairly minor nerfs, but the W not being able to be cast directly on turrets does hurt Azir's ability to actually take a turret. He can shove the turret very easily, but his ability to disperse it down is much lower. And then his wall only persisting for three seconds instead of up to seven seconds uh, is a meaningful team fight nerf as well. So that does not deter Phoenix from taking it since it has been his best champion pretty much throughout his time in the LCS. And I think it's a solid pick for TL. Well, I like it. We'll see what CLG do respond with though. Of course, we have to consider where the Vlad's going. I imagine who he could play it, but of course, Darshan has the option there as well. And the other big thing is Lucian pretty much dropped off the face of the planet. We've seen a lot of utility ADs. The Ash and the Sivers really rise back up in pick priority now that this patch pretty much has just dropped Lucian out of the meta, it feels like. It really feels like it. The ranges being reduced on his abilities and laning phase have made him much less lane dominant. And COG has gone for the Swain Vlad combo. We talked about a little we talked a little bit about this yesterday, Pastry Time, when uh, there was a potential for a team to do this. And having both these guys in the solo lanes really puts a lot of the other pressure on the other team in team fighting to very well prioritize burst onto one or the other because if you just spray damage it's completely ineffective since they both sustain so heavily the flaws in that team composition is in cod's ability to initiate so i'm actually expecting an ash as their last ad carry yep. pick unless tl takes it away and it's kind of why they're last picking their ad carry because that is the slot that's open unless stick say really fancies a grave those four champions though it's pretty much Three tanks, in a lot of ways, or three Bruiser-style mm -hmm, champions. Mm -hmm. Two of them are mages and a Karma. We got shields and speed up, so pretty difficult to kill. We'll see what TL answer back with, though, is maybe Piglet actually decided that the nerfs were not so bad. Yeah, and let's be honest, like, the nerfs that have happened in this last patch didn't really murder any of the top tier no. champions. They were minor nerfs, but still nerfs that can maybe take them down from being the top tier to just being, like, a mid to high tier champion. <laughs> oh, I'm so really good. Be real good, exactly. Uh, the Aurelia is one that might actually be the new top tier. We yes. were talking about this earlier. It's yet to be seen, but we'll see how Lola is able to do in that matchup. Well, not sure what's happening on the other stream, unfortunately, but yesterday, 100% pick or ban was Aurelia. Only banned in the final game of the six we got on Friday. Yep. And that trend's continuing here with TL picking at last. Most picked champion in the top lane over in Europe as well. So uh, no secret. The secret is out that Trinity Force is really good. A really badly really kept Trinity secret, Force. actually. <laughs> yeah. Guys, like, really secret is the wrong bad. word for that, actually. <laughs> it's just a thing. Well, CLG is still making this last pick. I wonder if they'll just go all in on the tanky champions. Yeah, I mean, that would be something if it was I'm expecting a Sivir Urn Ash. Yep. Something to just help the team a little bit with utility. An Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal yeah. might. Uh, not what I expected, but it is. It has been one of Stixay's favorites for a while. He's already played it 
three times in their five games. And I also do feel like with discussions I had with COG after their defeat to Bangs, Ezreal, and MSI, they're really liking this champion because yep. like 6A and the rest of COG just saw the things that Bang was doing on that Ezreal. Some of his ability to initiate with it, where he just shift in, get an Iceborne Gauntlet proc, like Blade of the Ruin King, and just be a total menace to that team. So I think 6A is going to try and emulate that a little bit and be the initiator yep. for this And we sort of team. mentioned the rest of COG's team comp. Pretty good front line, good at running forward. Uh, this is a pretty classic combination. Four champions that want to get in the face of the enemy back line. And Ezreal, who hopefully fends for himself <laughs> while the rest of the team runs around him. But TL have established, actually, I'm going to say a fairly standard front to back composition on their side. Phoenix on Azir, Pickle on the Lucian. Lolo kind of gets it all going. Plenty of tanks there as well. Yeah, the only thing that we'd see of TL's composition is it's not a pure true tank that Lorlo has found most of his success on, whereas last split we saw he usually won with Nautilus or Maokai later in the split, so it is a little bit of a change of play style, and they really need to get him ahead so he can deal with either the Swain or the Vladimir. Well, great draft there. We'll see what the teams do, but it's time to fire up your Twitter and share your series predictions using the hashtag TLWIN or the hashtag CLGWIN. Two titans from the playoffs in spring will now go head-to-head -head for the first time in summer, and not the two teams we expected to start 0-2, but Slow start's just that, a slow start. There's yes. still plenty of League of Legends to be played. It is just start. The number two team from the regular season versus the number three team from the regular season from spring split. Obviously, the defending champions uh, has a better ring to it than second best team in the regular season, but uh, O2 right now definitely doesn't even put them in the playoffs, so they got to pick it up. Well, I have good news. One of these two teams will end up with a win after this series, which is always nice. The uh, lost streak will be broken, but we'll see what happens here in the game number one as Dardoch's going to move out on that Rek'Sai. Yes. See if he can't get some vision down. Just looks like everyone's fanning out early on, making sure they have those choke points under control. Uh, but it looks like things we're not going to get a land swap just yet as Aframu, nice bit of poke from the Karma, gets himself some additional gold as well. Yeah, we've definitely seen substantially fewer lane swaps this split than last. Obviously, the Elemental Dragons coming in, the fact that jungle camps no longer share experience are all contributing to that factor. And not only does that create more even matchups, I also feel like it enables top laners to get a more reliable, decent start in the game, or also just lets you favor that matchup via ganks a little bit more. Like previously, you'd have to be very deliberate about how much double jungle you shared or where you put them to the empty lanes. And while that's still going to be critical later on, uh, early on in the game, a lot of it is just straight up laning and early jungle pathing. I don't know what 6A and Aphromoo are up to, but they went on a wild adventure, kind of wrapping around the Raptor camp there. But as you can see, the Keystone Master is on your screen. Nothing too surprising. I do like who he's rocking that Storm Raider Surge. So, see what Vladimir can get done there. But it looks like 6A and Aphro do go on a bit of an adventure, but end up back where they want to be, straight on top of that Grom camp, ready to start these standard lanes. Yeah, the only thing that's a little bit surprising to me is that Darshan has gone with the Strength of Ages instead of a Deathfire Touch or a Thunderlords on the Swain. But as a top laner, probably wanting just a little bit of extra tankiness. Can also, when you go Strength of Ages, get the reduced summoner spell cooldown. So his teleports and flashes will hopefully be of better use, but a little bit less dominant in the lane. Well, double TP as well for Lolo and Phoenix. Ghost flash for Huhi, so slight differences there for the solo laners. We'll have an eye on the bottom lane. That was Piglet straight in at level two. Again, reduced range on Illusion. You kind of have to commit more to your aggression, but. Yeah. more than happy to be aggressive. I mean, the Piercing Light was the biggest range reduction. It has 200 less range on its pass-through. Didn't seem to affect Piglet that much there. He was still able to get the pass-through damage on Aphromu, but it is less of a bully, so we'll have to track that in this lane. People were picking Ezreal before us. Who are you getting? Oh. Awfully low. Phoenix might even... No. Doesn't commit for it. But uh, that is a huge trade for Vladimir to just lose there. Yeah, and who he also lost his charges, could not get a Q off to get the empowered heal, and he's kind of lost his healing cycle. So very early on in the lane phase, uh, he's going to have to play a little bit defensively. Luckily for him, he did start Boots triple potion, so he can potion up, as long as he doesn't take a potion's worth of damage every time he looks at a minion. Yep, cannon creep, looking juicy, but I think he is going to be able to get it. So he does have to be careful, but again, healing up should be okay. Always looks scary with Vlad. As you can see, Darduk moving down the river here towards the bottom side. He's going to take out that Scuttlecrop for now. Smith, you're right above him, but they're not going to cross paths just yet. Yeah, really interesting how Darduk is prioritizing the pressure right now. Without red buff, he's going to try oh, and get a wow. steal. Just takes it. So clever by Darduk right there. Obviously, he had his Tremor Sense, so he could tell that X Smithy was doing the blue buff, but he can't actually smite it unless he can see it. So he wards right on top of it as he's walking up. 
to get the smite. I believe that's what happened. Really nice play by Dardoch. Yep, that is exactly what he did. Well, definitely got the blue buff, so it's going to cool. be hurting. Clever stuff there from Dardoch to start things off. This is sort of what we expect from the jungle. He's known as an aggressive player. Rexay maybe not the most aggressive jungler, but that does not mean his play has to change too much. Sticks a tagged up by Matt here. Concussive Blow is going to proc. No, not yet, but Piglet in. There's a stun in. Good damage there from the Winter's Bite. Sticks they forced to shift out of that trade. And once again, Team Liquid asserting some dominance here in the bottom side as Dardoch doing the same thing on this Grump camp. Yeah, all their lanes are pushing, and Dardoch is also pushing in X Smithy. The fact that Dardoch was able to three buff X Smithy with no external help is really impressive, and it enables the lanes to play even more aggressive. X Smithy's going to try and get something back, but. This is a really dangerous invade when you consider that all of his lanes are pushed in. And Dardoch has to know the bottom side of my jungle is clear. Xmithy is probably on the top side. We'll see if they meet again. Yeah. For now, Dardoch just going to take that wolf camp. So Xmithy, a smart path over here, will get himself some XP back. But the wolf spirit yeah. is going to see him gonna a little ping too him, late. Which now immediately sends Lolo backwards. So they're kind of on the hunt for Xmithy now. Found him. Lolo with the stun. Equilibrium strike through. Just going to do some damage down. But Tarshan there to make sure his jungle is safe. Again, like smart play from Xmithy, but this is a situation yeah. that's painful caused by Dardoch. Yeah, and I think that was still good awareness from both teams. As soon as the Wolf Spirit saw him, Lorlo came down to help, but Darshan also recognized that and went to help Xmithy. At the end of the day, the counter jungle is successful. Well, who are you still taking fire here in mid lane? Again, he's glad he'll heal up. Things will get better as he gains levels in this mid lane. But right now, chewing through a bunch of potions. Who he, a Phoenix, sorry, up about 5 CS as well. See if that league yeah. grows any more significantly as Piglet's are up about the same in bottom side. Man, I love watching Dardoch right now. He goes straight for the Raptors, knowing that Xsmithy passed around the slow side of his jungle. Like, he is doing everything to maximize his pressure right now. And he's going to be walking straight through a ward. Going to try and burn a summoner spell from Darshan. Already got a stun there onto Darshan. Good flash out from the Swain. Yep. And as Dardoch tunneled, the threat of the flash on Burrow is what forced Darshan back. And the wave is in a really bad spot for Darshan right now, even though he can teleport back into the, into the lane. Without his flash as a level five Swain, he would be very vulnerable to a gank. As long as Lolo doesn't just shove it up, which I feel like he's breaking the freeze unnecessarily. Oh, Huey again taking damage here. Phoenix level six, but not maybe enough mana to commit for an all in. Xmithy's actually driving by just to make sure the lane stays safe, but that's who he forced out of lane. Just 1v1 versus Azir. Yeah, not a pleasant experience for him so far. He's brought the Ghost Flash, which aren't the most dominant leaning summoner spells, and Phoenix was able to teleport straight back to the lane after buying a second Doran's Ring to continue the shove, so you're kind of expecting a slight advantage from him early, but based on how low who he's been getting, it it feels a little bit more one-sided than it should be. Yeah, and Team Liquid lanes continue to play aggressive here. Piglet and Matt pushing up, but getting a little tricky here in this bottom side. Aphromoo maybe even considering a threat here. Junglers can't be seen, so TL will back away from it, and Stix they actually able to keep the CS up relatively healthy. Zick Smithy just going to collapse some tunnels and try and take retake control back at this bottom side of the map. Yeah, and it's actually really important that he gets these tunnels out of the river because he wants to make it so Dardoch has the least efficient path back to his jungle since Smithy is already being outpaced by Dardoch. I also don't like uh, the fact that X Smithy has gone for both the Hunter's Talisman and the Hunter's Machete. Another minor change that happened in the offseason was... Uh, you don't get extra experience for having both of them. You get the bonus experience off Jungle Monsters with just one, so either you need to fully complete your Smite upgrade and get like the warding or the combat effectiveness, or you should be building a Longsword towards a Warrior Enchantment. This gives very little actual jungle help to x Smithy, and it's just allowing Dardoch to outpace him again. You see Dardoch only built the one component, already has Boots of Swiftness, and that's allowing him to move around the map so much better. Yep, super efficient early Rex. So items as Phoenix does get the blue buff donated over to him. Lolo continuing to fight Darshan in that top side. He tends to style in. Blade Surge, ulti procs. Now Darshan trying to run after it. Maybe Lolo fancies the dive, but not going to commit fully. Swaying with some good trade back. Yeah, I think Dardoch wants to dive right away. They know the flash is down. They know he can't stop the flash on Burrow. And they know his ultimate is already down a little bit. So here we go. go. Dardoch's in. Flash on Burrow is good. Lolo dives in under the turret. And it's first blood oh. to rally. They're under the turret for Dardoch. More than enough health. Yeah, that's about as clean as he's going to get. Darshan was low. Obviously, the ultimate's on a pretty low cooldown, so he's going to get it back up. But Lolo, to his credit, Prepped that gank. He harassed Darshan down to below half health so that Darshan would never have time to sustain back up with his next cycle of the Ravenous Flock. And Dardoch is right there to help. And we talked about being able to trigger that matchup and push it towards Lorlo. That's what Dardoch has done with two ganks now to the top lane. And Aurelia, we've talked about it, definitely gets very strong as soon as that first item comes in. But watch this gank again. Yeah, so this was the setup. 
Thorlo burns his ultimate to get Darshan low, and Darshan has to turn his ultimate off because the mana cost increases over time. Immediately, Dardok is there for the next gank. They know Darshan's going to have his ultimate back up again, but they also have all the Aurelia cooldowns. Flashes in immediately. Blade Surge is straight on top of him, and even though they never move lands since Dardok was full health before that gank, the turret doesn't kill him. Another jungle invade. I believe Dardok caught that again, but Lolo's just going in. Sheen Plus Whoa! thinking that for a solo kill. Lolo takes out Darshan. What world are we actually in right now where Lolo is solo killing Darshan in the top lane? What a job there, understanding his power spikes, knowing that Darshan doesn't have the strength yet, and going hard for him. Himu play gone. Who he trying for something here? It's Smithy also in the area, but Dardok again. This time to flex their gank attempt in mid lane. Phoenix will live easily. Yeah, Phoenix just has to burn the flash and double summoners burned on the other side from COG. So early game really going in TL's favor. This is the type of bounce back they want. And for COG, at least in the early game, nothing much has improved. Darshan is still struggling in the top lane, albeit most of that has to do with Dardoch but the rest of the lanes aren't doing much better. No, mid lane looking good for Phoenix. Still up a significant portion of CS there. Sticks a and Aphromoo keeping even in this bottom side of the map. It's probably the best news so far as far as individual lane matchups go. Sticks actually up a few CS there, using that Sheen nicely, getting poke in wherever he can. We see we saw so much of this matchup around MSI with Lucian versus Ezreal. I think with Ezreal, uh, Lucian especially being touched a little, it just feels like it's super skill-based. Yeah, I think it's a pretty skill-based matchup as well. I mean, obviously Ezreal is one of the champions who it's, it's really a good champion to split lane with anyone. So yep. even if the other guy gets ahead, you're still going to be able to sit really far back and just spam Qs to get last hits. Smithy is uh, looking for... You would think he was looking for wards in there, but he didn't have a Raptor buff in order to do so. He goes and finds a pink. Really seems like COG wants to be able to take this Water Drake. Well, sort of set up for it. Good vision on the area for CLG. Backs away, though. No one can see him. Yeah, but I mean, he revealed himself on a pink ward, which means Dardoch can go wherever he wants, and he's actually securing the Rift Herald buff for Lorlo, which is really important when you consider how Lorlo is actually going to be a split-pushing threat this game, and this will also stop Puhi or Darshan from being able to deal with the Aurelia for the next 20 minutes really love what Dardoch has done early on in this game, and maybe they go straight for Darshan. Now, this is the riskier move. Yeah, not a lot of health, but maybe just wants to go in instead. But already he down, Dardoch's like, yeah, okay, don't fancy that at all. Yeah. That's one of those heat checks. He's like, how strong <laughs> does he think I really am? <laughs> well, you still just have a Bami Cinder and Boots of Swiftness, so not that strong yet. Oh, it does see him. Darshan spots him. Uh oh Dardoch caught shopping. Not this time. Gets himself to safety with a tunnel, and Lolo moves straight back up and lands. Says, hey, this is still my lane. Yeah, but luckily Dardoch has tunnels placed on the next cycle of his jungle already, so he should be able to base and go straight down to bottom lane to continue his pace. Doesn't pull the trigger on the farm alarm just yet. Teleport from Phoenix for a gang. Yeah, Matt going in, flash Q there, trying to stun up Afro move. The calling is down, the damage is there on Afro. He's going to go down to Matt. Ah. Picks it up with the ignite. Yeah, that was a little bit weird. It almost felt like the team was wanting to give the kill to Phoenix since he burned his teleport to get there, so Piglet actually held back from trying to get the kill, but then the Ignite from Matt ticked out and gave it to him. So that's actually a really unfortunate kill take there by Matt, since they invested a lot for that kill. And now kind of push pressure from CLG. Dardoch will come to visit once again. Just keeping every single lane up and healthy. Phoenix now back with the Stinger and the Amp to him, able to shove these waves up very effectively. Of all the changes that happened to Azir on this patch, he still does what you expect him to do. Put up soldiers and clear waves. Yep, and is really hard to deal with when especially you need to be a closer range wave clear champion like the Vladimir. The Azir could actually turn out to be a very solid pick against Vlad. Right now though, it's maybe trying to get the Water Drake as they realize Team Liquid is caught in a few base timers. Yep, pretty smart stuff here from CLG. Smithy gonna give it his best solo attempt. Afro helps a little bit. Just the shield down the huge too. Come on, Afro, hit this one. There we go. Nailed it. That that damage help. Aphromu is splitting points a little bit between Q and E. Three points in the Q, two points in the shield, which is the E for Karma. But the one thing Dardoch hasn't done as he's taking over the map is Dragon Control. So Xmithy is able to secure that. Yep. Looks like they've sort of decided the top half of the map is where they want to snowball. Lolo did take the top outer naturally after the pressure that Dardoch provided, and he's back in again. Darshan gonna get dived. We understand this gank. Dardoch goes in, there's the knock from the Umbara. Darshan dies again. That's gonna happen, and it may continue to happen. Like, even before the nerfs, when a lot of teams were picking Swain 
in the top lane, we saw a lot of games where Swain just fed. Because it's not the traditional top lane champion that's like really tanky right off the bat. And he also doesn't have like any dashing abilities to get away. So if you fall a little bit behind on Swain, you can get punished pretty heavily by ganks. Smithy caught in rotation, but gonna turn it around onto Dardoch. Kuhi here as well, gonna zone him away. But Dardoch, he's got the Cinderhawk. He's not particularly afraid of them. Smithy there will reclaim back control of his jungle. The Stixay and the Ocean Drake can have to heal up. Piglet went all link with that Ghost Blade that he's now picked up. Yeah, I do also think that the Ocean Drake should not be ignored that COD was able to get like that, especially with Swain and Vladimir. Like, if Darshan is worried about getting shipped out a little bit by the Aurelia, uh, having the increased mon and health regeneration is just going to help him be at full health. So hopefully at one point, the all-in by Aurelia and Rek'Sai doesn't kill him. He's not at that point yet, so really whenever Dardoch and Lorlo decide to all-in, they're going to get the all-in. But I can envision a time in this game where he doesn't get one shot by those two champions, and that's really what COD needs to stall out for. Well, right now, I think, unfortunately, they're still in that territory. Lolo's finished that Trinity Force, and the Rod of Ages is yet to be completed for Darshan, so a huge power spike for Aurelia. 14 and a half minutes in, Darshan's still working on that first item, but Stixay and Afro, gonna see if they can equalize the turret gold here. Still deep, far, uh, pretty, pretty far behind in gold here. Yeah. 4k down so far, and cannot take the turret just yet. Piglet returns, make sure the wave stays. They got a lot of damage on that, but not being able to take it will obviously not help their gold in the short term. And it's going to be on TL to really try and snowball this game. I, I still feel like the potential late game sustain gods of Vladimir and Swain is a really scary world to live in. And Team Liquid also has Aurelia and the Ghostblade build Lucian, which are tremendous mid game champions, but not great late, late game champions. So Team Liquid really needs to continue to keep the pressure up if they want to win this game. See Stixay still holding back, but taking poke every now and then. Piglet actually trying to keep the way back a bit. Nice cues there from Matt, actually. Landing almost every time onto Stixay. Dardoch's here, though, and Piglet's in. Afro who knows what's up now. Stixay going to have to bail, but the culling's through. Doing a good amount of damage to Afro. Heal pops. That's going to keep CLG safe for now. Huh, definitely feels like they went a little early there. Piglet pop ghost played before Dardoch had begun his tunnel under the wall, and Lorlo was also about half a screen behind them there. So. That could have just been the precursor for a more aggressive play. They're going to look to take multiple turrets. I mean, Phoenix has just been crushing that mid lane this whole time, so he finally is able to take the turret. Now they have the rest of the team on the bottom side of the map. It turns into a nice play, and they didn't even really need to kill the bottom lane. They just needed to pressure him out. Yep, and the pressure they'll get, they'll probably take bottom on this play as well. Darshan trying to counter push back in. Is Piglet going to deny off some CS and then take this turret down? After this play, it should be TL up 3-0 in turrets and just mounting a huge gold lead, 5k at least after this turret falls down. Yeah, and this is a continuation from what we saw even three minutes into the game where Team Liquid was winning and pushing all three lanes and Dardoch took the first blue buff away from X Smithy. Every single person on TL was winning their matchup and when you do that consistently over 15 minutes, yeah, you're just gonna kill all three turrets and that's what they've done. Well, looks like the Sun Turret goes down, so a small victory is currently for CLG as Lolo with uh, that Rift Tail buff for quite a while longer. Just going to continue split pushing up here in that top side. Seeker's Arm Guard finished for Dashan, so things get a little bit better. He's completed that roller as well, so that, that will start to stack up, but Lolo is just such a threat. Even a level up yep. on Dashan right now. Yeah, I mean, he's got the Corruption stacks and the Trinity Force plus Spectre's Cow right now, so Darshan's return damage isn't great. Lolo's burst is still really high. If anything, CLG might be trying to predict the dive right here, and Huhi actually roams up defensively just to prevent a dive on his secondary turret already 5,000 gold down. Like, when you have to make that move, while it's a good move by Huhi, you're fighting a losing battle. Yeah, because he's still waiting for his wave to be pushed in as well, so it does have some time as Phoenix might even start moving things around the map. There's so much CS right now as Azir. Afro actually top side as well. Gonna clear out some vision. CLG know they need to reclaim this top half of the map back, otherwise Lolo's gonna be a real thorn in their side. And the next Drake is Infernal, now up in a minute and 10 seconds or so. CLG got the yeah. first Ocean Drake. We'll see if TL can maybe nab this one and continue snowballing in this game. Yeah, maybe that's why we're not officially naming them Fire and Water, because then you'd be like, oh, the water clearly wins. Yeah. That's not necessarily the case. Infernal versus Ocean, you're never really sure what's stronger. Uh, in this case, it's hard for me to imagine CLG getting the Dragon. Uh, and Infernal Drake in 50 seconds should just be going straight over to TL. And that sounds like great news for them, given the state of the game right now. Yeah, just more raw power to move around the map with. Like, 
Lorlo can just use the damage to try and burst out Darshan. A, a lot of this, since COG is already going to be like the sustain gods in team fights, is just about Team Liquid getting enough power to burst through them in a full-on engagement from 100 to 0. And Infernal Drake probably helps with that more than any other Drake right now in this game. Yeah, COG sort of just have to play defensively for a little while longer. Lolo needs to escape because Xmidis here with Darshan. Lolo might just turn and fight it. Going back in, Blade Surge, Darshan there, and now Dardoch's gonna join the party. Lolo maybe fancies to go back in, but he is forced to flash out from under the bird. Next Smithy gonna turn things around, but Phoenix is here! Oh so my! Dardoch takes out Darshan as a huge ulti comes up from Azir. Smithy's gonna die, and now who is forced to pull away? Yeah, I was gonna say that was a greedy call by Team Liquid, but it was actually the right call because they had such a lead that Lorlo could actually just 1v2 for about eight seconds while the rest of his team arrive for support. Phoenix doesn't even have to burn his flash. He just does a nice shift over the wall in order to get range for a beautiful Emperor's Divide, and they pick up two kills. I mean, Aurelia. We've missed her, yeah. right? I mean, just trying to do Krugs on a ward. Yeah, I love Aurelia. The way he queued on him and then auto-attacked him was just wondrous. Uh, anyway... He's already very well ahead because of how well he's played this lane against Darshan and pushed his advantage. And yeah, Darshan and Xmithy get a little bit happy because they think they can turn this around, but no one has been able to track Phoenix's roam from the mid lane. He arrives for the kill and who he has to just pull away to safety. Six they contributes his ulti, but not enough damage for a kill as Team Liquid will get the Infernal Drake you predicted. No contest here for CLG. They will have to really batten down the hatches and try and play through the next 10 minutes or so at a very big disadvantage. CLG, you hate the adage, but they are scaling. But uh, <laughs> it's gonna take We're a while. We're scaling, boys. Just play for late game. And we joke, but that's actually what CLG needs to do. And we've seen at MSI that they're capable of coming back from even 17,000 gold leads if the other team gets a little haphazard about the way they close the game. Uh, but Team Liquid knows that, and Team Liquid knows that they need to pick up these victories. So I'd expect Team Liquid to just continue to put the pressure on. And if you're trying to put percentages on this game for what chance COD has for coming back, uh, it's pretty low yeah. right now. Even though Team Liquid's actual turret siege isn't spectacular, the wave clear for COD isn't spectacular either. So I think TL should keep going around, getting these objectives and keeping the pressure on. Well, Lolo's definitely gonna have plenty of pressure because he's back in the bottom side now. Gonna get that split pushing away. Looks like Kuhi currently. Gonna try and answer that as Piglet's busy top side. Team Liquid gonna try and get the three-wave pressure started here because it's a little too early for Baron. Yeah. I think the next best way they can break that siege. They may have a, maybe have a quieter five minutes of CLG just fight to get their farm as it pushes towards them. Yep, and for TL, they know that Mountain Drake is coming up in four minutes. That could cue the collapse of all of COD's buildings as well as the easier baits for Baron because that 10% pre-mitigation true damage just makes all of those turrets and neutral objectives that much easier to close out the game with. Or... They just keep diving because Lorlo still has Rift Herald buff. And he was, he was hoping Darshan would actually use a cooldown on him right there. But uh, Darshan showed enough patience. Cute little maneuver there. TL actually will start the Baron a little early. They're hoping to be able to sneak it. Uh, but it was not to be sneaked. CLG already transitioned into two blue trinkets, far side totems. Well, Phoenix with the Sun Turret up in mid lane, although it will just fall down now. Able to keep that wave pushed up. TL try and use what pressure they had there in those lanes to sneak that Baron away, but good uh, good awareness there from CLG to make sure that doesn't happen. And again, we'll reset the map for a little while longer. Actually check in with where these teams are, because we talked about how up TL are at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, two items for Azir, two items for Lucian, two items pretty much for Lolo. I think he just has to go back and shop. Just everyone is ahead by yeah. at least an item. And they're spiking really hard right now. Like the Black Cleaver plus Yumu, Yomu's Ghost Blade for Lucian is right where he wants to be, where his culling just becomes absolutely insane. I'd say the build probably peaks at Phantom Dancer, actually, uh, when Piglet gets there, so he's super close. Uh, Aurelia peaks at Trinity Force and plus one tanky item because that's when he become like super bruiser focused. I uh, love the fact that he's gone for Spirit Passage because that's the double AP that COG has already picked. So really, Team Liquid's in full position to really punish COG right now since they need to finish their Zonias before they can match some of that power. The only person who's in a good power spike right now is Stixay, who just completed Mermana, but I don't even think that oh is as powerful as it is. Oh my god. Phoenix, that's disgusting amounts of damage. Riley's making it very hard for Aphromie to get away, and Lolo forces Huhi out from the bottom side. It's actually Darshan that's there now, but Team Liquid will take it one way or the other. Tier, two start, tier 2's starting to drop. Yeah, really been an impressive game for Team Liquid so far. If they hadn't given up that one water break, it would actually be a perfect game to this point. 
is crazy against the defending champion CLG, who have been able, we mentioned, to lose slowly. But this one looks like it could track towards a fast loss if Team Liquid can close. Here's a fight. Nick's a little too low, goes in for it anyway. Pops here for Divide. Huey, though, does take him out. Like Smithy low, but not falling. And Huey going to dive his way back in. Dashan leading a charge as well. Dixay just needs to land these. Mystic shots, but it's just the one kill. TL get a little greedy there. Yeah, and it was over eagerness as well from Phoenix. He saw a big play, but he was really low. He didn't have a Zonia, so if he puts himself in harm's way like that, he's going to be able to fall. Uh, and that could have actually been a lot worse. COD doesn't necessarily have the ability to follow up super well, and Lorla wasn't there either, so maybe Lorla and Darsh oh, are to go. Straight in with a four man on Burrow, I think, and it's 50 slow. Darshan, though, healing up. Going to keep moving through. Karma shields keep them healthy. Now Lolo back in. Sticks there. You better shift away. Lola is still hungry. Yeah. Without Azir, a lot of Team Liquid's team fight damage is missing. So, like, those two fights are probably a little bit scary for Team Liquid because they have the 7,000 gold advantage and they're not able to fight clean. Uh, but they are going straight for Baron. COG is going to try and stop it. That teleport is really far away, though. Yeah, it's the brute force play from TL. Dardock not too healthy, but they're going to try and take it down. Oh. Smithy in trouble. Gets taken up by Lolo. That's a smite off the map. Dashan does not get the Miracle Steal, and he's going to go down on the back end as well. Yeah, Zonius isn't completed yet, so he walks in. He gets Brahms done. He's just instantly deleted. Once again, Team Liquid needed to be decisive. It was a scary moment in the game, obviously, when they messed up the push in the mid lane a little bit, but they very decisively go. They're very clear about what needs to happen before this Baron, mainly the fact that X-Smithy would have a chance at 50-50. Dardoch making aggressive calls, and also the team is falling off on him. So they say, as soon as you see X-Smithy, just kill him. Phoenix gets poked, Orlo flashes for it. Then they can take Baron very easily. Darshan's the only one who's been able to get around the corner. They very easily kill him as well, even though Matt had to flash away for safety. They secure the Baron with very minimal loss. And almost a 10,000 gold lead up now for TL with the Mountain Drake on the way in 30 seconds. Complete control of the game. 25 minutes in, and they'll add to that by taking the blue buff and giving it over to Lolo. Stix is also going to fly down, but we'll miss that buff by a significant margin. CLG once again backs firmly against the ropes, and this Baron Seeds will be difficult to weather. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, at the moment, like, who's going to clear the wave? Uh, the... Very hard for casters to clear Baron Empowered Minions, and Stixe on Ezreal is not the most potent of wave clears, especially when you consider that Lorlo is going to be able to have the Baron Empowered, Glimpse of the Void Empowered, Split Push, and with still no Zonias on Darshan, like, that's actually a dive threat. And they've certainly shown willingness to dive. The Phoenix is going to set up another turret here. Dragon just going to go casually over to TL. That seed is getting even better for Lolo as he adds yeah. a mount, uh, Mountain Drake for that seed's capability. Looking pretty good for TL right now. This is this is the type of growth that you would have wanted to see from TL after they had a good regular season with the integration of Dardock and Matt and coming into their second split and probably being a little more calm. Like, this is a very decisive team who's winning all the lanes. This is the dream for Team Liquid, at least so far, 26 minutes in. Yeah, sticks they poked out. This tower's going to melt. There's actually an ulti up from X Smith. You're gonna try and keep them out, but no chance so far. That inhibit is absolutely dead. No defending here for CLG. Not able to have the type of ranged wave clear or zoning that you would require. I mean, the Swain Vladimir combo isn't great at initiating, right? Like, that's why you need initiation help and why we're expecting something like Ash. That wouldn't have mattered in this case, though, because with 12,000 gold down, you don't want to initiate regardless. These inhibitors are melting. Yeah, this bottom inhib, probably going to go down. Maybe CLG feel like they have to fight here. Lolo maybe going in, but who is just going to get blown up in the front line? Timo Blake's down. Dash on the next target. That's a double for Piglet. Now going to surf in and take an inhib for his trouble as well. And he wants more. Does he go for it, Smithy? See how looking yeah. very greedy. They might close it out now. They killed the double AP like nothing. Those are the two guys who are supposed to be drain tanks. And you can see when that falls behind, it just completely falls apart. Nice block on the Ezreal from Matt there. They're going to hopefully wait for the minions if they want to close this game out. Uh, Dardock makes the call to be a little bit safer about this. They were a little bit low. They know they have control of it. He might just all back and try. Oh, to Phoenix goes in for Smithy. Woo. Can't make the big play with the ulti this time, but Dardock's back. Lolo's coming back. They're oh. going for the win. Yeah, they're going to go for it now. Dardock ulti's way back in. Afrim will forced to flash out. Nexus turret number two does melt. The Nexus will fall on Team Liquid. A convincing game number one. You could say that again. After losing all four of their games, which culminated in a 0-2 match record in week one, this is a completely different team. Their off week must have been spectacular with getting Dardock back in the lineup right here because every single lane did well.
They picked the Lucian, which other teams had dropped. They did great against Dixay and Aphromoo. Phoenix got to pick his comfort champion in his ear, crush the mid lane, and Lorlo punished Darshan once Dardock got him ahead. So literally every player on TL showed up that game, and they beat CLD fast in I 28 minutes. I think you said it best after that second, that first solo kill. What world do we live in where Lolo is solo killing Darshan? Yeah. Definitely one where Team Liquid wins games. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, how long is this atrophied CLG going to last? Like, we have to remember they're the defending champions, and they have not looked good since they've come back. And, like, even towards the later half of MSI, you started to see these, like, potential flaws. Like, Darshan had not been playing the solo lanes well in 1v1s. He was so good at lane swapping and playing the map. I really wonder like how much he's been studying the matchups and how good he can actually be in 1v1s because he was the lane swap wave manipulation god and that's how he got most of his advantages. How many times did we actually see him straight up fighting people? Those skills are really rusty for Darshan right now. He's getting punished for it here in North America. He certainly is and it does feel like the solo lane is up maybe the story of these two teams right now because we looked again to uh, Phoenix and Huhi. Phoenix Almost a turnaround performance from week one. Mm -hmm. Spectacular game on a signature champion is there, and it feels like who he's just still struggling. Yeah, struggling pretty mightily. Like, he was pushed in that entire game. None of his teleports on Vladimir looked good. Like, it is going to be hard, and we don't want to read too much into the first game of this best of three series because I can't speak for you, but I, every series I've cast has gone to three games. <laughs> so I'm, I'm ready for turnarounds. But in that game one, it looked like Team Liquid was super dumb. I got my first three game series yesterday. <laughs> Maybe we'll get lucky again, but while the teams prepare for game number two, let's